Are we greeting? Hello. Hello, all you folk joining us in Zoom land. Hello, Ruth. Hi, sir. Hello, Hello, Ruth. Yes, there's Ian. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Sue. Hi. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ian. How are you all? Hello, Ian and Ruth. Hello, everybody. It's Roma here. Hi, Roma. Hi, Roma. Hi. Hi. It's good to see everybody gathering. Another cool night here in the Yarra Valley. And um, it's, I hope you find it heartwarming to be able to gather and share some meditation practice together. Oh, yes. we've, got, we've got the um, mainstay of the A team tonight. Uh, you're, you're in luck. We've got Ruth leading the practice this evening. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Actually, she's not going to like me saying this, but I want to, um, I'm going to say something anyway. Um, some of you all have noticed my, my wife's very good looking and uh, <laughs> it's not just because of her natural genetics, but it's actually because she's got such a good heart and it shines through. And I reckon it's something that's been um, matured with and developed with years of uh, meditation practice is good heart and uh, I think it's something you, you notice in a lot of people who meditate regularly uh, there's a sort of a, a gentleness and a kindness um, easy sort of to feel some connection to so thank you my dear you're a great advocate for your practice and uh, over to you Thank you, Ian, for that rather, um, I would say, exaggerated introduction. But I will pain. accept it graciously and show that mm. my meditation pays off a bit. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I know we all learn to meditate for a variety of reasons, and I'm I'm really happy to um, to share something personal with you because I know that um, it's quite difficult. A lot of the stuff that you're dealing with, and many of you are dealing with more than average, um, and even average these days is a lot. <laughs> um, I, I, I would say that we all learn to meditate or we decide we want to learn to meditate or we meditate for very, very personal reasons. And mine actually happened as a result of a terrible fear I had of childbirth when I was pregnant with my first child at the age of 28. I'd been, um, I'd been told that childbirth was hell and that um, it was a complete nightmare and I was pregnant and fearing um, a horrific labour. And I was really quite anxious. And in our culture, a lot of women, I think, well, particularly in my day before, you know, the good antenatal classes and things like that, um, I, I needed to learn to do something with my fear and um, anticipation of the difficulty I'd have. And this was 36 years ago. And I didn't know how to find a person to teach me, but I looked in the um, Sydney Morning Herald and um, there was a, Thai Buddhist monk teaching um, meditation in Pitt Street on a Thursday night, 8 p.m. <laughs> um, I still remember his name, Frasamai, and, um, and he got us to sit there and uh, follow our breath. And, um, and we did that for about half an hour, and then he would give a little, what they call a Dharma talk, a, a talk about ethics and philosophy for about half an hour and I wasn't interested in that because in those days I was very um, scientific and um, um, and also psychological and not 
interested in the spiritual path in any way. And so I concentrated on just learning how to follow my breath. And I found that I did actually feel a lot calmer and more confident. I did it every day and I actually did it for an hour, which um, now absolutely astounds me that I found the time at that stage when I was working full time, an hour a day of, um, of meditation. And, and I think this probably gives me a, a right to say something which I think I think is true, which I'm probably I'm probably out of all the people in the alleviate mentor team, I'm probably the one who's listened to guided meditations more than anybody. Um, because I actually really get helped in my concentration by listening to the guidance. And I think being guided is fine. You will hear different opinions about it. And some people will say they're a bit like trainer wheels and you should just do that for a while and then you should be doing it on your own. Well, I'm not actually someone who shares that view because I've been listening to guided meditations for 30, well, nearly 30 years. And I feel like they've really helped me to tune in to the actual feeling sense of meditation. Um, in the sense that I've chosen to listen to people that I, I know have a, a great experience of meditation and they have a certain kind of presence and that comes through in the way that they speak and the tone and the feeling of the voice. So I thought I'd share that with you because um, there's, not, there's not many people that would necessarily give you an, an opinion on it that I think is um, is as much based on my own personal experience because most of the people I know who meditate actually stopped using guided meditations, you know, after a few years and and then meditated themselves. But I've chosen to be different, and that's particularly because I think my mind was a very overactive mind, very very easily distracted, and I think it was also because um, there are certain medications and caffeine that also makes your mind a little bit more likely to wander and and lots of thoughts to um, to interfere in your concentration and particularly if you're dealing with stress or anxiety you're highly likely to benefit from a soothing voice to um, augment the actual effect of your own endeavor in it your own um, meditation so um, I wanted to share a few other things because I think a lot of people these days are dealing with stress and anxiety. And I, and I, just, I just had a few thoughts that I wanted to share, which I'm hoping for some of you might be helpful to hear. Um, I think if you are dealing with stress and anxiety and you're aware of it, that it's probably something you know already or you might not know you, you need to really take care of how much sleep you're getting and to do the sorts of things that help with getting a good night's sleep because I think that makes an enormous difference to how you're going to deal with the stress or the challenges during the day and you need downtime from your phone you actually need to be away from these devices that we allow to run us in a way that's quite unprecedented in human history. So I'm gonna encourage you to take charge of your phone and have at least four waking hours a day away from your phone or have your phone on silent. Um, and that, that's on top of the do not disturb at night that many of us use. And I would say the other thing is to turn off notifications from phone numbers that you don't recognize. I don't think you really need to be notified about a phone number that isn't something that you're actually um, connected to. It's not the same as the old telephones where we always answered everything that came because we didn't get that many calls. And so unknown numbers, I turn off the notifications. I also meditate every day. At the end of the day, if, no, if I, hadn't I haven't found time before that, and I 
think that even five or 10 minutes meditation before you go to sleep is really helpful for having a better sleep and better effect from the meditation in terms of things like pain or, um, or dealing with illness, um, healing. And if you find that the meditation is, is needing a little bit, a little bit more assistance if you're dealing with something like anxiety or that kind of thing and you can't even find yourself letting yourself sit still that it's actually also quite useful to do a breathing exercise before you meditate a simple breathing exercise where you're just taking a breath in to the count of five holding the breath to the count of five breathing out to the count of five and holding it out to the count of five. And if you were just to do that for five minutes, 10 minutes before you meditated, I think you might find that you have an even better effect. And that's, and that's also related to um, the pranayama, the pranayama that the yoga people teach. So those are just a few thoughts I've had on um, managing anxiety and um, stress with meditation and particularly coming from my own experience and incidentally I did have a very good labor and I had a healthy baby and it was really um, one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life and I thank the meditation that I did every day before he was born for that um, I think I wouldn't have had that sort of experience if I hadn't meditated and I'm not saying that that's possible for everybody. And I know complications happen. And I just, I was fortunate. But the meditation, I'm sure, played a part in it. And um, the only thing that I regret was that as soon as I had a baby in my arms, I stopped meditating. <laughs> and um, and uh, that was like um, dropping the baby, actually. <laughs> it wasn't very good for me at all. So I think one of the things I would recommend is that even when you're um, doing it for a reason that's no longer there, the reasons change, um, then it's still worth continuing. So I'd like to lead you this evening in a the main daily meditation that we do. And those of you that are feeling like you need to lie down, that's fine. You can lie down. Obviously, we don't want to go to sleep, but there's no um, problem with lying comfortably. Body symmetrical, if you're doing that. Hands resting on the tummy or the chest where you'd like to put them, but just the balanced sort of way. And perhaps on a, on a, on a surface where your back's completely flat rather than having a pillow, but that's up to you. So if you're sitting as usual, take your posture as you'd like to, either in a chair or any other way. But if you're in a chair, have your feet slightly apart, flat on the floor and your hands resting on your thighs or in your lap, the way you like to hold them. And remind yourself you're doing something important for yourself, something significant and just take a moment, a few moments to adjust your body. Back just as upright as your body is comfortable. And when you're ready, you might like to join me for a little while and let your eyes close gently. And if you'd prefer to keep your eyes open that's okay too you can do that just rest them allow them to just feel natural for you and remember that this is a time for relaxing and becoming mindful and letting go into stillness. Now, just a gentle reminder to yourself of why you're doing the exercise. But 
Then when you've done that, aim to let go of any effort, any striving to make something particular happen. Just being curious and alert as we follow the guidance. Now just do be curious to notice whatever sounds you can hear right now. Firstly, notice any sounds coming to your awareness from outside of the space you're in right now. Aim to simply notice them. Have the intention to let go of any judgment, any commentary, just simply noticing the sounds with a gentle curiosity, simply noticing any sounds coming from outside of the space where you are right now. And now bringing your attention more particularly into this space you're in. And notice any sounds coming from within this space itself. Again, just noticing. Curious. free of any judgment or commentary, simply being aware of the sounds, the pure sounds. Pure awareness. And now bringing your attention more particularly to your own body. And listening closely. Maybe you can notice the subtle sounds of the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And as you do, bring your attention more to the breath. Notice too the movement in the body as you're breathing in and breathing out. So being aware that as you're breathing in, you're breathing in. And as you're breathing out, you're breathing out. And as you continue to hold your attention on the breath, 
you'll probably notice each time that you do breathe out, there's a natural feeling of letting go a little. It's just a natural thing. But as we breathe out, we tend to let go a little. To relax a little. So without making any more or less of this, simply noticing each time that we do breathe out, relaxing a little, letting go a little. But at the same time, notice how as you do breathe out, the out breath tends to taper away. to become longer, finer, subtler. So breathing out and letting go. Relaxing a little and the out breath becoming longer, finer, subtler. And when the out breath is completed, often there's a little pause, a little gap before we do breathe in again. And so breathing out, the out breath going longer, finer, subtler, then a pause, a little gap. Letting go of any effort to breathe back in again. And then aiming to simply allow the in-breath to come back in of its own accord. Breathing out, the out-breath becoming longer, finer, subtler, that feeling of letting go, relaxing a little. Then a pause and simply allowing the in-breath to come back in of its own accord, quite effortlessly, effortlessly. Relaxing, releasing. and feeling the ease of it all. The ease of it all. Just simply letting go and feeling it all through. Through the body and the mind. Calm and relaxed. Calm and relaxed. Just going with it. Going with it. Quite effortlessly. Effortlessly. Letting go. Letting go. And now it might help to take your attention to that point between the eyes, a little into the forehead. And notice there what's like a still, quiet center, a point of stillness. Maybe you notice it more particularly in the space behind the closed eyelids. So just holding your attention gently, lightly on this point of stillness. 
And it's almost as if you can merge into the stillness. Relaxing. Releasing. Merging. Dissolving. Maybe even a sense of expanding into the stillness. Just simply letting go. Quite effortlessly. Effortlessly. Letting go. Letting go. And now resting in that stillness for a few moments. And if at any stage you do notice your mind wandering or becoming distracted, as soon as you do notice that, gently, kindly bring your attention back to that point of stillness. Relaxing. Releasing. Merging. Melting, dissolving, simply resting in that stillness now for a little while. Quite effortlessly. Effortlessly. Letting go. Letting go.
Good. That's good. Good. When you're ready now, just letting your eyes gently open again while raising your gaze. So I'm hoping that worked for at least some of you to feel more relaxed, more at ease. Perhaps in, um, in your body as well as your mind. And, um, and there were a couple of things I forgot to say about, about uh, those of you that are having difficulties with sleep, because many people do, that, 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 the, that the meditations on the app for sleep are very good. And that if you were to do them before you um, intend to go to sleep, even if you didn't fall asleep, it's highly likely that your rest in bed, if you allow yourself to rest fully for as long as you can, that that physical relaxation and rest can be as regenerative and as helpful to you as actually sleeping. And sometimes I think we get very hung up on the thought that we must have the sleep. And it's partly because I think we feel like we need a break from our own minds and we don't want to listen to ourselves any longer. But the actual truth is that you get a lot of, a lot of benefit from deep physical relaxation and resting in a dark room with nothing to do. So I'd encourage you to do that if you are one of those people. Um, and many people will have a difficulty from time to time. And, and the other thing that I've heard that can be very helpful is to dim your lights before. Um, that actually sunset was sunset once upon a time, not so long ago. And we're highly likely to still be quite physiologically like we were 200 years ago before all this light in, at night. And it's not just computer screens, it's also the lights in the house. So to actually dim your lights at sunset and be in a more dark atmosphere um, is actually a very good way of getting the right hormones to, to, uh, to flow for that circadian rhythm, that rhythm that happens through the body with all the hormones over a day. And you're much more likely to have a better rest and a better sleep. So something for everyone. And, and, and Ian, I just wanted to say thank you for your lovely introduction. And you're not bad looking yourself, old fella. <laughs> Hey, I'll see you later. <laughs> um, folks, just as we're winding up, um, uh, I might just mention, some of you know I write a blog, uh, and I don't sort of mention it all that often, but uh, the blog I've posted uh, today uh, is probably something that many of you would be interested in, talking about uh, prevention or cure and looking at the... Um, statistics that review the level of health in Australian society. Um, and it's pretty grim, I think. It's, it points to the fact that half the people alive in Australia today are dealing with a chronic illness. I mean, just take a moment to take that in. I mean, if some of you are in that situation, you're certainly not alone. Um, and about half the people in Australia during their lifetime will um, have a significant episode of mental health uh, problems. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I sort of, it pains in writing about this not to um, want to have people who've got a significant illness feeling uh, guilty or shamed, but it's it clearly points to those of us or to those people who are well. And, you know, if you have got an illness, you know, part of 
part of what's driven me in this uh, work is having had a major chronic degenerative illness, you know, cancer myself. Uh, it just makes so much sense not to get it if it's at all possible. I mean, obviously, it's I'm way past that. I've, I've had all sorts of things, but um, it, it just seems to me that you know, people sometimes say to me they think I was clever because I recovered, and the, the real answer is I would have even been clever if I hadn't. I would have been clever if I hadn't got it in the first place. Uh, and I know the causes of illness are complex, and it's not just as easy as saying, you know, we could have prevented it. But there's clearly a lot that, that is possible. Um, and if we think about what's, what's at the heart of that, it's, it's a lot to do with the choices we make around our lifestyle. And when you think about what regulates what we choose to do, that's clearly our mind. You know, we, we're influenced by our peers, our family, our advertising, all sorts of things. But, but ultimately, it's our own mind that decides what we eat and how much of it and what we drink and how much of it, whether we exercise or not, all those things. Um, and if our mind's not reasonably clear, you know, if our, client, our mind's a bit confused, uncertain, or if it's beset by... Um, difficult emotions, then the chance of it making good choices is diminished greatly. Uh, and so this is why, I, I, again, I'm such a strong advocate for meditation, because one of the one of the really significant things it does is help us to clear our minds and, and bring some inner stability uh, so that we're actually more likely to make good choices about what we do with our lives. Um, and that's why I think it's such a precious thing to practice, you know, to, to actually have our own regular practice of meditation. So at least we've got a better chance of making some good choices. Um, and why I think it's so important that younger people, particularly with all that's going on these days, get help to learn and uh, take up a regular practice of meditation so they've got a chance of doing the same. So, yeah, I, I think um, have, a, have a look at uh, if, if you haven't seen the blog, it's, it's just called a blog.com. Um, it's easy enough to find. And it, it might be one to share with other people who are interested in their health. So having said that, uh, we'll say good night and or good day or good morning or whatever it is, uh, depending on which part of the world you're in. Uh, for many of us, it's um, in the evening. And uh, wish you well and see you next week. Lovely.